Okay, last video, I promise. Sorry about the audio. Uh, I think my, my microphone is, is getting worse and worse as I spent uh, all spring uh, teaching from, from home with it. So it looks like I'm going to need a new one before we hit the, hit the fall here if we're going to do some more online teaching. Okay, so in the last couple of videos, we set up our card template. We then set up our Excel template. And we got them saved as a CSV that is delimited by semicolons, not by uh, commas. Oh, by the way, um, you can set these up as formulas. So I actually set these up to, you know, concatenate different things and set it up as a formula here. And when it exports as a CSV, it'll just read what the output is, not the actual formula. So um, that might be useful and helpful for you as well. Okay, so then once we're in here, how do we actually run this? So what we're going to do is uh, the plugin is under image and it's make my cards. I have some other ones here that I did for other specific decks, but uh, the one that you've got is make my cards. So I'm going to click make my cards under the image, remember, because we're using this current image. Um, also, I would make sure that you've only got one image open, the image that you want to work with. Supposedly, it will run with two images. It'll take the leftmost image, but I, I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay, so what are we going to do? In here says, what CSV file do you want? So I'm going to say, okay, I want um, in my GIMP plugin demo, I want the GIMP plugin demo CSV. Okay, so that's my CSV file. In fact, I think it's got all these already set for me. Um, input directory. So these are the, this is the place where the images are that it's going to input as layers. So these are all my card arts, right, that are in this demo images file. So all those are going to get plugged in. Okay. Now that can be different than your output directory. The output directory is where do you want to save these cards? So um, I'm saving them to the card image outputs. And you can see that in there I've only got one other image so far, the back for this demo, card demo that I'm doing right now in this video. That's the only thing that's in there, and it's going to populate it with more. Okay, and then prefix. Okay, so the naming convention here. What it's going to do is for every card, um, it's going to name it. So this card right here, it will name it with whatever prefix we choose. So I'm going to choose demo. So it's going to call this card demo. And then since these are all fronts, we don't have any backs that we're making. It's going to call it front 001, and it's going to save everything as a ping. Okay. So that's what the, um, the name is going to look like once it spits it out. And then the next one, which will be demo front. 002.ping and so on and so forth, right? So that's the naming convention. You've got this prefix, front, and then a triple digit for numbering. The reason I do that is so that at the end, if you've got fronts and backs, all the fronts will be together and all the backs will be together and they'll all be in the correct order that will line up. So if you're putting them into like drive through cards or wherever you're getting your cards printed, uh, Game Crafter, wherever, then they will automatically already line up. Okay, so that, that should make it easier for you. So you've got this prefix, and then the front and the number will automatically be added. Okay, so what prefix did we want here um, in our, we've got demo. Okay, are these unique card backs? Uh, no, these are fronts only. So I'm going to go fronts only. And how much do we want to compress these pings? I'm just going to go at one. You can go zero. You can do, you know, one, zero to nine is available, uh, just like a regular compression. Uh, and then I'm going to hit okay. And so what it's going to start doing, you can see it starts changing things, like there's the rotated footer that it's putting in, right? And you don't see it show up here because um, I had it kind of forget the steps that it's doing as it's doing it so that this your memory doesn't get used up. Um, because in the, the 200 card deck I was working on, I mean, this memory was getting up to, you know, two gigs just trying to, to run this. And so uh, I had it pause and kind of freeze uh, what it was doing and, and not. Uh, show it on the screen and that that really saves on the memory so that way it stays down at the same basic level okay so it's done uh, so we will check on our cards here card image output and boom there they are they all just showed up and you can see this one's only got one icon that one's got two this one's got three right all my icons changed uh, you can see how the extensions got turned on and off uh, that one has like missing one and three extension and each one has their unique um, card art and of course, like, you know, uh, alien head, we probably should have saved this as a ping. So this white was, um, you know, transparent. 
uh, and notice that the, the background is, is bleeding through. So again, it, it's not stretching anything. It's just plugging in the exact image that you tell it to. So you want to make sure that these card art images are uh, the way you want them beforehand, right? Um, okay, so it's got all those. And we could do the same thing uh, with a horizontal card or a hexagon card or whatever type of card it is. So I'm going to close this uh, demo and I'm going to open, um, let's go, let's open this one. This is the one uh, I spent a lot of time on. You can see all my tons of guides there that I, I had. Uh, let me, uh, let me uh, view or turn, I'll just remove all of those guides there. Uh, so I had a, a pretty complicated card here that I built and um, lots of stuff over here, right? And so, but it, it's horizontal, it's a different shape, but it still works the same. So if I want to go to image and make my cards, then remember that we got our card data this time was the horizontal data, the GIMP plugin uh, horizontal. So this is a new one that I, I had saved differently from a different set of cards. So I'm going to open that. Um, you know what? I will. I don't have any inputs, so I'm just going to leave that the same. You could also have it as none because there are no inputs. I didn't use the ol command in the CSV. Uh, output it. You know what? I'm going to output it in the same directory because I want you to see how the naming convention helps keep things separate. So instead of this one being demo, I'm going to call this um, horizontal, right? I'm going to use the, the prefix horizontal. And these are, do they have unique backs? Yes, they do. So this one's going to alternate front and then back, front and then back on the CSV file. And uh, I'll compress that up more as well. Okay, so this one I think I, I told it to make 12 cards um, as well. And let me just close some of these things so we can you'll kind of see it um, as it works and opens things up. So uh, here we go. It's starting to make the cards. You can kind of see over here how it's picking different um, the card back, the card front, it's alternating between those things, right? And plugging in data. So you can see it kind of working in the background, but you notice that my uh, megabytes are not going up, right? The, the memory usage is not going up there because, again, I've got it uh, frozen. So it's not going to uh, soak up all of your memory as it does this. It just it does not remember what it did. It's not keeping track of that in your history here. Okay. So um, this original deck was, I had a 200 card deck using this template and, and a 100 card deck or a 120, 128 card deck, actually. So uh, when I first ran this program, my, the plug-in for this particular card deck, it took about five to 10 minutes, probably probably closer to 10 minutes maybe, to go through 400 cards, but um, it pretty quickly does it. Okay, so we've got um, we've got all these right here that, that uh, it should be done now, right? So I'm gonna check and see, and boom, there they are. And notice how, again, here are all the backs all together. So when you go to upload at the Game Crafter or you go to upload at drive through, um, you can you've got them all right there. You just grab them all, and the horizontal back 001 goes with the horizontal front 001, and so that way they should line up perfectly when they go in there, right? And um, so now what is this just good for upload? Sure, uh, we used I used the standard you know 1125 by 825 template, so it's got the the bleed on there. It's got a card bleed. But of course, um, most cards get chopped down, right? So here's kind of like what it's going to get chopped down to after you upload that to whatever service you're going to get your cards printed at. Um, and so you might want to make a, a print and play model of this. So I've also made another pl plugin for you that is called um, Making Print and Play. Uh, I can discard those changes. And this one lives in a different place. It's up here under File, Create, because you can create this with no image open at all. Okay, you can say, make a print and play of my poker cards. And um, uh, it'll say, well, what image do you want to use? I'm not using an image drawable. I'm not using that. That's a layer. I got nothing, so I'm going to leave those empty. Input output directory. Okay, where where is it getting these cards from, the card pictures? So um, I got them here in the card image output. Now, remember, I've got both my demo deck in here. And I've got the horizontal deck, but we're going to do, I'm going to show you how we can do these two separately. So for right now, I'm going to do just the demo deck. That's my prefix was the demo. There were only 12 cards in that demo deck. They were vertical 
and they all have the same card back. Okay, so this plugin depends on if you say no card back, it has to have saved in here your prefix back dot ping. Okay, it's got to be prefix plus the word back. That's how it's going to recognize that. So if you used my plugin to create all of your fronts, then you should be good to go here with this. Uh, so these are vertical, and uh, what it's going to do then is it's going to start a brand new, so it opened a brand new thing, and it's starting to pull in the cards one at a time and line them up on a field, and then it'll merge all these down into one layer so that that layer can then be cut. And then what it's going to do is it's going to do the same thing, but with the card backs, so that you can print this immediately as a print and play. It's going to save it as a PDF. It also knows it's using uh, modular arithmetic to know that, okay, this last, since it's only 12 cards, the last one's not going to have eight on it. It's only going to have four. Uh, and so it doesn't, uh, you know, make a mistake when that happens. And so there's, you know, the back of page two, there's the front. And notice how it has rotated those cards to make them line up so that when we print them, they'll actually print cor correctly. And it's in the same folder. Here it is. It just created a PDF called demo print and play. And there it is. There's page one. Of course, here's the top of the cards, right? And so on page two, it's flipped and they're over here. So that way it'll print correctly when you do it double-sided. And uh, it'll do the same thing with uh, the horizontal cards if you want. So again, I'm going to go to create, make a print and play of my poker cards. And I'm going to use the same input output. But this time, instead of the demo cards, I'm going to get the horizontal cards. That was 12. They were horizontally oriented. And these are unique front and back. Okay, so it's going to grab both of those. Um, and the reason, um, or you, you, the reason you want to be careful with this prefix is because it's grabbing everything front and back by those prefixes. You notice even the backs now, see, it added that prefix horizontal to back 001, back 002, back 003, and that's how it knows where to set them so that they'll line up good for printing. Um, also, uh, the the um, final PDF that we're going to get here, you know, it's not the, the the best quality, but it works. It'll work just fine for a uh, you know a quick print and play, right? And so it puts these these blue lines on here as cut lines, and it also trims out. So these cards originally, remember, had bleed, and so if we zoom in here, you can see that what it did is it automatically trimmed out that bleed. And if you've already trimmed off the bleed of yours, that's fine. It checks to see how big it is, and then um, It'll, it'll get it in the right spot. So it, it can tell whether you have bleed or not. And again, that PDF then showed up in the same place as my images. So here's that new PDF. And there's the ax and the bow. So here's card number one of 12, card number two of 12. And when I go to page two, it is flipped. Here's card number one, here's card number two. So that way it can be printed double-sided. So uh, those are a couple of the, the um, plugins that I've got for you there. Uh, that's the Make My Cards, which makes all the card images, and Make a Print and Play, which will do the make the PDF for you. And then I think there's also one other plugin there that will take a text layer and just outline it in a different color if you want to do that. It was something I found myself doing regularly and uh, had several steps involved, at least in GIF. So I, I made a plugin of that as well. So if you have any questions about using this plugin or how to modify it, please let me know and I will be happy to help. Thanks for watching. Hope this is useful for you.